Well, hello again. I've got some reading to do. First, I want to tell you, though, Miss Rachel Harwell has been listening to these, and um, so we'll say hello to her. But she has bought some of these to pass on to nieces and nephews, as if I remember correctly, and maybe even a set of them for herself. But she has also updated me that uh, there's a new publisher now, and the uh, the page numbers are different, and so the stories don't always appear in the same volume that I'm reading from. So just keep that in mind. I don't think that'll confuse anyone, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. They are available. They uh, She sent me a picture of the set. They look beautiful, and... Uh, encourage you to get those to read to your children and for your children then to read on their own. Super good stuff. All right, let's go. This one is entitled The Bible in the Suitcase. The Bible in the Suitcase. A group of young people was sitting, was visiting their minister and his wife one evening. The conversation was about praying in front of strangers. What do you think of this? asked one young woman. Let's say there are two men on a business trip. They share a hotel room, and one of them kneels at his bed to pray before going to sleep. Don't you think that looks pharisaical? <clears throat> I don't think that's pharisaical at all, answered a young man. As long as, as long as it's done sincerely, I believe it's your duty to pray wherever you are and in whatever circumstances. I agree with you, John, commented another young man. I once heard that two people who faithfully attended church got into bed without praying because each was afraid to pray in front of the other. My husband can tell a story that fits in very well with this, suggested the pastor's wife. It shows clearly that we may never neglect prayer. Yes, it's quite a remarkable story, answered the minister. Almost 40 years ago now, I went to Boston to be a salesman in a department store. I was only 18 at the time. I lived in a boarding house in a room I shared with two other boys about my own age. There were 16 boys in the boarding house. On Sunday morning, we got up at about 8 o'clock. Church started at 11, so we had three hours until church would begin. My mother had packed a brand new Bible in my suitcase, and I wanted to read it. I'd been brought up to read the Bible every Sunday morning. My roommates were reading magazines, and I didn't dare look overly religious. They'd think I was just a goody-goody. I picked up a magazine and tried to read it, but my conscience bothered me so much that I put it down and went to my suitcase started to lift the lid of the old trunk, but then I thought I would look like a Pharisee. So I changed my mind, and I went over to the window. I stood there for about 20 minutes, feeling miserable. I knew I was doing the wrong thing. I went back to my suitcase the second time. I had my hand on my Bible this time, but I was afraid that the other boys would laugh at me, and again I closed my suitcase. As I walked again to the window, one of my roommates laughed and said, What is the matter with you? You're so restless. I laughed too, and then I told them the truth. At home, I always read the Bible Sunday mornings, but I was afraid you'd laugh at you would laugh at me. To my surprise, they admitted they both had Bibles in their suitcases, and they had also been wishing to read them, but like me, they were afraid of being laughed at. So I said, let's read our Bibles every Sunday morning. The boys all agreed, and the next moment all three Bibles were out. I tell you, we all felt better after that. The following Sunday morning, two boys from another room came in while we were reading our Bibles. When they saw that we were doing what when they saw what we were doing, they stared at us and exclaimed, What's all this? 
a church meeting? I told them what had happened the week before and that we had agreed to read a few chapters every Sunday morning before church. Hey, not a bad idea, remarked one of the visitors. You've got more courage than I. My mom gave me a Bible too, but I haven't looked at it since I came to Boston. But I guess I should read it too. The other boys asked one of us to read aloud, and they sat quietly and listened until it was time for church. That evening, we three roommates agreed to take turns reading a chapter aloud every evening at nine o'clock. A few evenings after our decision, four or five other boys happened to be in our room talking when the clock struck nine. One of my roommates glanced at me and reached for his Bible. The boys stopped talking and looked inquiringly at the boy with the open Bible on his lap. I explained our custom and they said that they would li they would stay and listen. The result was that without exception, every one of the 16 boys in the boarding house spent his Sunday mornings reading the Bible, and it proved to have a good effect on all our lives. I'm not sure if all the boys were converted, but three of them besides myself are now ministers of the gospel. Do you see how much influence one person can have by grace you must never be afraid to do your duty that's a good lesson isn't it and not just with reading our bible i often uh, take my bible with me uh, in the restaurant particularly in the morning at breakfast time before the COVID hit i would spend time in a couple of the restaurants panera or Chick-fil-A, often meeting people there for breakfast or for talk. And I, through that, opening my Bible and reading, I met several people who would come by and say, hey, that's a good book you've got open. Or they'd come by and say, so what you reading? And I would tell them. We've even had people visit our church and some who are right now attending regularly because of that. The other thing is praying when you go out to eat in a public place. Don't do it like someone I saw where they sit at the table by themselves and they pray with their mouth open and the volume loud so that everybody around them hears their prayer. That's being Pharisee. That's what Jesus said that the Pharisees did. They go out in public and they make a spectacle of themselves. But certainly it's good to bow your head at the table when you and your family are eating at a restaurant and pray and thank the Lord because we're supposed to give thanks in all things I've also had people come by my table and say I saw you praying are you a Christian and that gives me the opportunity to talk to them I've seen other people do that and I've gone by and said hey I saw you praying that was very encouraging thank you so don't be afraid don't be embarrassed the grace of God is at work in us for other people when we do those kind of things. All right, look forward to seeing you Sunday. God bless.